Hi guys, this week we're going to be talking about the radiator install. I also installed the battery tray and we tried to get the aircon compressor to fit. Uh, it was a pretty unsuccessful week, but we're going to run over it all and, and try and cover everything. As always, uh, leave something in the comments if you have any questions or, or any sort of comments. And also, uh, tell me about the project that you're building and I'll, I'll try and send some tools out to you if I, you know, if I can. Uh, anyhow, let's get into it. Right, so here's the radiator sitting in place and the reason that I've got it in there already, uh, the instructions actually say that I can uh, rivet this panel in place, but what I want to do is there's actually some uh, guiding bits of, of uh, aluminium sheet that, that sit in here to ensure that you are ducting all of the airflow straight into the front of the radiator there. Uh, that bit of cardboard there is just to protect the coil. Uh, but what I want to do is I obviously don't want to put in this bottom panel and then drill sort of odd rivets and stuff like that in where this where this side panel is. If I can share a rivet line there and, and get that all neat and just have it in with one, one rivet, that's going to be a good idea. Uh, at the same time, I also uh, dug out my condenser coil for for the electric ac and we've got to try and get that in front of this radiator here uh, now it's a pretty tight fit as it is we need to make sure we're not restricting flow to the radiator but also it needs to go on the front side of the radiator <clears throat> condensers by definition are going to be more sensitive to uh, the air on temperature than than the radiator is so it's not like i can just tag it on the back there the other thing which i'm going to need to look at and I know a few people have spoken about getting a fair bit of temperature into here, which is where the battery is and your, your steering box and your brake master cylinder and stuff like that. Uh, so I need to just have a good look at that. And, and this the airflow is meant to actually come up here and come out through the, the front clip. There's like a big hole and opening there. I'll try and get a picture of it and stick it up here. Uh, so that's all stuff that I'm going to work through. Uh, the first point, part is actually just to disassemble this condenser assembly because I'm not going to be using that fan. I'm not going to be using these mounting plates. These, these condensers are actually really designed for industrial machinery. They, they're usually uh, installed in cabs of, you know, big cats or prime movers and that sort of stuff. So we're kind of adapting it here. And this is, this is the beauty of uh, diverging from the, the factory recommended or factory sort of typical installations. I think it'll be a good thing in the end, but uh, obviously it's, it means that there's gonna be some mucking around and a bit of R&D and, and, and a lot of work to make sure that we can fabricate some brackets and stuff like that. This is a 350 by 350 wide condenser. That's all, and whereas this, this radiator is 300 tall. So, we're going to have to look at how we make all of that sort of fit there and and also we need to get the the condenser refrigerant pipe work in and out so there'll be a bit of fun with that so i'll show you the um the disassembly process of this and and then we'll have a look and see whether we're going to get any get any uh option to fit this in otherwise you know worst case scenario is i need to look for another place for the condenser or or get a specially made one uh, produced uh, that's that's obviously a, an infinitely more difficult uh, situation but We'll see how we go. Hopefully that rain isn't coming across on the audio. But here's just a perfect case in point where uh, using a power tool versus using a hand file or some other sort of hand tool uh, is is less desirable. You can see here, this is just the, the radiator panel support brackets. And I just need a clearance around the welds that are there. You can see it's very, a very like close chamfer on either end. And the difference between doing it with a power tool where you can potentially and very easily take off a little bit too much is if you just do it with a hand file, you can actually sort of develop a, a bit of a press fit for that. So the instruction manual says to tape those in place before you actually uh, drill the rivet line in the back section there. But from my point of view, if they're actually press fit in here and held in by the chassis, so much the better that they're gonna stay in place and you're not gonna run into any issues down the track and, and it'll just stop any movement there. You know, like that's actually pretty, pretty solidly in there at the moment. Or tight spots. I just cut this hole with a smaller drill bit that I could actually get in close enough. And then I'm just using this on the end of a ratchet, if that'll focus, which just allows me to ream the hole out enough so it'll accept the rivet. And here's the beer condenser. You can see here that it's actually reasonably thick, so that's why it's going to be difficult to fit. Uh, and we've got sort of fairly limited options in terms of the way that we're going to be able to bolt those AC hoses up. I'm going to be getting custom AC hoses made. You can make them yourself, but they're not that expensive just to buy. Uh, and also you can see we might look at uh, just whether we can trim some of this stuff off top and bottom just to make a bit more room there. But 
you look it kind of is what it is in this case you're not going to be uh sort of building your own condenser you could look to try and find one from a you know an equivalent vehicle noting that if you reduce the condenser size you'll also redu be reducing the capacity of the ac system itself the original the original fixings are stuck in a plastic bag here and labeled uh make the explanation relevant enough that you can work it out when you completely forget what it is i've got enough experiences with bags of random you know nuts and bolts on the premise that you think that you're going to remember this stuff uh to know that it is a absolutely shit house idea uh to to think that you are ever going to have have that that level of recall uh anyhow look let's see if we can get it to fit Zip ties are great, but what I'm going to do down the bottom there on that lower fan mount is I just got one of these uh, P clips and I've just run the drill in reverse just to ream that out enough so that it will actually fit on top of the mount there. Uh, and then I'm just going to route both of those two cables through through that there, which will just keep it all neat and tidy. It's just a bit better way to do it than zip ties in my, in my mind. So um, that that's sort of the process that I follow. Uh, running the drill in reverse means that it doesn't grab and rip your fingers off when, you, when you're trying to drill it. So any of the soft materials like that, or even that nylon that I was using, uh, you kind of sort of melt your way through by running the drill in reverse, which actually is a, a lot more efficient and, and a lot neater. All right, while I'm here, I just need to cut in the battery tray. Uh, and it sits on the right hand side here. So what I need to do is just uh, make up a bit of a template uh, Which will just I guess reduce the number of times I have to get it in and out there And you can see that I've just got to cut it in uh, between the The uh, front supports there and get it all to fit in there So I've just used that and marked it up on the actual battery tray itself And we're just going to use the Dremel to cut it out So it doesn't take very long to see that that actually was never going to fit. Um, in my defense, I'd seen the intercooler that sits up front of the radiator on the LT5, and it, it is also quite thick, but obviously nowhere near as tall. And I didn't have dimensions on the condenser when I purchased it uh, from from the guys at Renko when I bought my compressor. So, uh, you know, like things don't always go, go to plan, but uh, there is a way around it, and we're just gonna have to chase up a condenser that's gonna, that's gonna suit, suit better than this one. Um, I could make it fit uh, with the existing setup and, and I'll just run through that now and show you, show you sort of the, the flow and effects of, of making that work. It, it would actually be the easy and probably sort of the, the quick way or, or the way that lots of people would probably just attack this. They'd just use what they, they've got and make it work. Uh, I don't think it would, I think it would be a suboptimal uh, result for this car to just go down that path. So uh, look, I'll, I'll leave that as a last resort at this stage given that uh, it would require me to, to rotate the radiator uh, which would have some some further issues. Anyway, I'll run through that now. Right, so we can see here that with the radio installed in its final position, there is bugger all clearance below and also not a lot of room to raise it up because we're going to run into issues with the clam that's got to close above it. Uh, the only option really is to, to lift it up or to rotate it to get that existing condenser in. Uh, and it's not my first choice, even if I can get it to feed the the, the uh, air conditioning pipes through the top there uh, because it's going to have a flow-on effect that it's going to stuff up the bends connections here for the flow and return to the from the engine to the radiator it's either going to make it tighter or necessitate potentially putting in an additional joiner which is another failure point so i don't really want to do that um you can see the coolant pipe in there with the insulation that's going to make the bins difficult to fit but we're going to make that work because i think it's worthwhile um and we're also going to i'm going to weld in a bung here on the flow and on the return and use that to feed the uh, heater core. I, I've had a few people ask me about that actually so whilst we're on I can quickly run over that. Uh, bear with me I'll do a, a bit of an engineered explained uh, type type setup here. So if I put this in front of the whiteboard I'll try to draw this. Uh, if you've got your, your pipe from the engine to your, radiator, to your radiator core uh, and we split it We've got some going to, or the majority going to the radiator. We'll call that R for fun. And we've got this one going to the heater core, which is H. And then they both join back up and go back to the engine, right? 
Uh, there's a few people that are wondering whether they're going to get enough flow through the heater core uh, if they just tee up that arrangement. Uh, what happens is, is that there's a couple of people, I uh, forget whether it was Darcy Wysak or Bernoulli that, that did this work, but you obviously have to have the same amount of flow coming in as returning to, to the engine. That's just matter of fact, right? Well, the way that this flow is going to split is going to split based on the head loss in each of these arteries. So if it is 50 times more restrictive to go through the heater core than it is to go through the radiator, you're going to get 150th of the flow through the heater core. Now, I think that's probably actually not a completely ridiculous idea. Um, and if you work out the amount of heat that you get out of that, uh, if you remember uh, Q equals MC delta T that you would learn in high school, well, the way that simplifies down in this case is going to be 4.18 times the liters a second times the temperature drop across your heater core equals your kilowatts. Right? Uh, now, we could go and run through all this and use stuff like Reynolds number, which talks about whether it's laminar or turbulent flow, and we could try and get all the K values for all the fittings and think about all that sort of stuff to try and make it work, but that's going to get a whole lot diff a whole lot more difficult and it's probably unnecessary and unreliable in this case anyway. So we've got the EWP150 electric water pump that I'm using. I don't know why you'd use litres per minute, 150 litres per minute, because it's pretty much like dams per camel, but uh, that does come down to, if you divide 150 by 60, 2.5 litres a second. Uh, if you divide 2.5 by 50, assuming that your heater core is 50 times more restrictive than your radiator artery, you're going to have 0.05 litres a second being delivered to the heater core. So if we go back to this calculation, you got 4.18 times 0.05 times delta T across your heater core, which, assuming an 85 degree thermostat, probably means that you're going to get sort of a 15 degree drop across that as you're heating, so 70 degrees off the heater core. Um, this is water side, of course. Uh, so that's actually going to work out at 4.18 times 0.05, so divide by 20 times 15, uh, about three kilowatts, which in a cabin that's going to be basically very, very cozy, uh, you'll make, make good friends in this one, that's going to be well more than enough heating capacity out of this system. So. I'm going to try that to start with. Uh, I am just going to weld in a couple of bungs. So if worst case it just didn't work whatsoever, which I can't see that happening, uh, I can just put a plug in either of them and move on with life. So anyhow, uh, that's that's sort of the plan there. Um, obviously, I don't want to like put this condenser in the back because that's going to defeat a whole heap of the purpose of not trying to run things fore and aft. And I don't want to run another fan and load things up electrically. So, you know, look, like I say, it'd be suboptimal to use the condenser that, that's down there at the moment. Uh, worst case is I could use it, but I've actually got onto a place in South Australia that does custom condensers or has a very good listing of condensers. I might even put that down in the comments so you could see, uh, I guess, comparable vehicles if you're doing any sort of custom work yourself, uh, looking at one that you can get. Obviously, if that's a three, 350 by 350 condenser by 40 mil thick uh, and you go to half the thickness, you want to go to twice the size, rough enough. Um, of course, I'm bastardizing all of these uh, all of these type of engineering explanations but you know rough enough you can work these things out like i say i mean even this ewp 150 like assuming that that delivers two and a half liters a second is probably nonsense i'd say that pump's rated at sort of a free flow rate so absolutely no head on it and you would assume you're probably down at sort of two liters a second or something like that by the time you actually put it in the system uh the other thing i'm not going to be doing is i'm not going to be running an lines for my coolant setup i was going to do that because it's really neat you can get dash 16 lines now uh, which is just like these oil lines here except really big obviously to be able to deal with uh, coolant type size hoses you know 32 mil or whatever but the downside of the of those hoses and those fittings are an being called army navy meaning that they're super reliable they're military spec um the downside being is that that braided hose actually really transfers vibration and is super inflexible so Look, after all that sort of stuff, as much as I thought it would look really good, and especially in show cars, you see it a bit these days, it's just not something I'm going to go for on this car, uh, just for that vibration issue. I did buy some black hose clamps, though, which will which will look quite nice uh, and, and neat in that, that respect. Uh, actually, if I look at this sort of fitting here in the header adapter, that's sort of the, the bung that I'll be welding in a bung. It won't be a fitting like this, uh, but I'll weld in a bung and then just screw in a, a tap off or something like that to feed the heater core. Anyhow, that's sort of the, the roundabout way, but look, I think it'll 
it'll make sense and uh, once I find this this uh, appropriate condenser it'd be good to get it installed and put this one to bed but you know such is the the beauty of diverging from from the factory recommended installations uh, but you know you make life you do make life hard for yourself sometimes but it should be a pretty cool good outcome in the end so that, that's it for this week's video uh, obviously things don't always go to plan but you know we're moving along and we are getting things done uh, there's the tow hook installed and uh, I did waste probably uh, I don't know, probably seven or eight hours installing this battery tray. It was meant to be a five minute job and it took took so long. Uh, not least in part because I've uh, installed my SeaTech battery charger uh, connection there. Hopefully I can get this to zoom in. Uh, which is which is sort of uh, something that I like to have on all my cars so I don't have to buy batteries every other week. Uh, there's, there's a connection point that will be running there that is fused and my... Uh, Russian battery handle which which does the job because um, it's hard to lift the battery in in that position without dropping it uh, But you know next week we'll we'll uh, see some more progress and and I'll probably install the uh, Gear shifter and a few other things in the side pods. So that'll be good to see um, As always uh, I guess you know put any comments up if you have any suggestions or, or you have any questions I'm always more than happy to answer those and I've been getting to most of them uh, otherwise I, I sent out the first Rivnut kit uh, to, to one of the uh, one of the guys last week which was really good to do um, he lived over in England so so that'll be good that'll help him get his uh, Daytona together uh, and and uh, all going well next week. Hopefully we'll, we'll have the funds there to do another giveaway uh, There's a couple of things coming up actually that are gonna be pretty good uh, and pretty special that I can send out to people uh, a couple of people have contacted me uh, Wanting to get amongst the, the giveaway, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm not doing this money and they think that has been a good thing to do so uh, You know, we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, thanks. See you next week